Shake. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. To the household of faith, we say praise the Lord. To our online worship, amen, community that's with us this, uh, uh, this uh, Sunday morning, amen. We welcome you to Bethesda Temple Church here in the city of Los Angeles, California. To those yes. in the sanctuary, we say praise the Lord as well. Amen. We've come to lift the name of the Most High amen. God. Yes. Hopefully, amen, God is smiling upon you. Hopefully, wow. you're in a place, amen, where you can worship God freely with us, amen, as we enter into your homes and connect and unite as believers here. Amen. God is doing something wonderful even right now. We know that no one else receives the glory. No one else receives the praise. And so I don't know where you are right now in the world, but I want you just to stand up, move the move the coffee seat or the coffee table to the side. Get out of that chair. Put your hands on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a simple song that says. No one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the praise. But our wonderful Savior. Come on, sing it along with us. Say, no one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the glory. Say, no one else can receive the praise. No one else can receive the praise. Say, no one else can receive the glory. Say no one else can receive the praise. No one else can receive the praise. Cause he's holy, holy and righteous, righteous, omnipotent, omnipotent and mighty, and mighty. Alpha, Alpha, Omega, Omega, my Redeemer, my Redeemer. Stay right there, stay right there. <laughs> Say no one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the glory. Say no one else can receive the praise. No one. And mighty, and mighty, Alpha, Alpha, Omega, Omega, my Redeemer, my Redeemer, my Savior. My Savior. Hey, no one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the glory. Hey, no one else can receive the praise. Yeah. No one else can receive the praise. Nobody else can receive the glory. No, no one else can receive the glory. Hey, no one else can receive the praise. No one Say no one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the praise. No one else can receive the praise. Say no one else can receive the glory. No one else can receive the glory. Say no one else can receive the praise. No one else can receive the praise. Why? Because he's holy, holy and righteous. And mighty, and mighty, Alpha, Alpha, Omega, Omega, my Redeemer, my Redeemer. Say, and I'll take nothing at all for all you've done for me. And I freely, I freely, I freely give to throw away if I should give.
his head. Say hallelujah. 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 My soul to magnify hallelujah. his wonderful name. Hallelujah.
his immediate land. Somebody give him away. No one else. 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 I made up my mind. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Hallelujah. Even in this, you ought to walk up and down your house and just say hallelujah. 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 Time the glory. Hallelujah. Time the praise. Hallelujah. Sin revival. Sin revival. Sin revival. Sin revival. There's a people that will praise you this day. There's a people that will praise you this day. There's a people. There's a people with uplifted hands. There's a people with uplifted hearts. There's a people. There's a remnant of worshipers in times like these. We'll find a way to praise you. Galatians chapter 6, and we'll be reading, 
hallelujah, from verse 4 through 9. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. And it reads, but let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man should bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word of communication unto him that teacheth in all good things, but not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. For he that soweth his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary and well-doing, but in due season we shall reap Amen. if we faint not. Hallelujah. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord's word is blessed. Yes. Again, we're so excited for you all to be with us today to worship with, along with us in spirit and in truth. And just do me a quick favor. Amen. For those of you that are streaming, if you could just be so kind as to take a moment to share this broadcast. We want to take this gospel all across the country. So do me a favor and just hit the share button. Amen. So that you can invite your co-workers, your loved ones, uh, your friends and family near and far. Amen. In this season to amen. Worship along with us in spirit and in truth. We're excited about what God is doing in this house. Amen. Also, just drop us a note. Let us know where you're from so we know which part of the country you're worshiping with us from. If you're overseas, what have you. Just just take a moment, amen, to just introduce yourself, amen. God bless you again. It's Pastor Kyrie Short here at Bethesda Temple Church, Los Angeles. We welcome you, amen, into our worship experience this afternoon. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints Hallelujah. of God. Thank, Thank you so Jesus. much for streaming online today. I just want you to take a moment to think about how grateful you are to the Lord. Just lift up your hands wherever you are and just say, Lord, thank you for protecting my family during this time. Thank you for protecting me during this season. Now somebody ought to praise God 
right there. Somebody ought to lift up your hands right now. Come on, sing. Grateful, grateful. Grateful, 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 grateful,
Can you do me a favor? I know we can't have testimony service during this season, but can you just post something in the stream right now that you're grateful for? Just pull that phone out right now and just type something in the comment section. Just say, I'm grateful <laughs> for your hand of protection. Tell God, I'm grateful for a second chance. I'm grateful for my life, health, and strength. I'm grateful for you keeping your hand on my children. I'm grateful that I know you. I'm grateful that I know you. I'm grateful for the doors you've opened. I'm grateful for the ways you've made. Lift your hand and help me say, we give you all, yeah, 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 all the glory, yeah, we worship you, we worship you, Somebody just type thank you in the comment section. <laughs> Somebody just give him a thank you. Somebody just give him a thank you, yeah. He is Alpha and Omega. And we praise you. We're grateful. We worship, we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all. We
wonderful Savior. He's a wonderful Savior. He's a wonderful Savior, yeah. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, help me just lift him up. wonderful hey. Savior. He's an awesome God. And we thank him. And we worship him. And we glorify him. For this is the day that he has made. A day unlike any other. Hopefully you're enjoying the worship experience. It's thick in here in the house. <laughs> the glory of the Lord is in his house. I hope it's in your living room. I hope it's amen with your family as you're nestled watching the television screen. Amen. We thank him. We thank him for saving our souls. <laughs> we thank him for, for making us whole. We thank him for giving to us. Amen. Amen. For giving us salvation. For, for giving up freely of his life. Amen. His sacrifice. We're grateful. Amen. We're grateful for another chance. Amen. Every Sunday in this house, we lift up God. Amen. Through the reading of the 100th Psalm. And so we want to continue that on this morning. Let's receive, amen, Elder Bill as he comes at this time with the reading of the 100th Psalm. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord, church. Praise Hallelujah. Lord. Amen. I'm glad to be here today amen. in this house of worship. And we read the Psalm 100. Amen. We all have it say amen. 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 And we all say it together. Make, Make a, a joyful, joyful noise, noise unto, unto the Lord. Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Give God a praise now. Hey, hallelujah. 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 For the Lord is good. The Lord is great. 
He keeps smiling on his people. Thank you, Amen. He keeps favoring his people. Amen. This is the day that he has made. Amen. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Again, a special greeting and thanks to all of you out there who are joining us. Amen. Via Amen. Facebook Live. Amen. We hope that you're enjoying the worship, enjoying, amen, the fellowship. Amen. The Spirit of God is rich in this house even today. Amen. Uh, before they play a little clip they normally play during the offering, amen, I want to take this moment, amen, just to encourage us in our giving today. Amen. For those of you that don't know, there are several ways that you can partner with us. Amen. As we attempt to continue, amen, spreading the gospel all through throughout, amen, the world, even here in Los Angeles, amen, there, amen, are four ways, amen, that you can be a blessing to this ministry, for those of you that live in the Los Angeles area, you can drop, amen, your offerings off over by the church office, amen, our uh, facilities, amen, um, although we're limited in what we do, amen, you can drop it off in a secure box, and amen, we'll make sure that your offering is recorded, and uh, you can continue to be a blessing of tithes and offerings during the season, amen, our church corporate address is 4936 Crenshaw Boulevard, amen, here in the city of uh, Los Angeles, California, and so you continue to do that as we normally do, amen, we also have, amen, uh, online giving tools such as Cash App, Amen. So for those of you that want to give by the cash app option, amen, our amen insignia, amen, or ways you can give to us our dollar sign, Bethesda Temple LA. And so there's a way for you all to partner with us in ministry, amen, uh, via, amen, those uh, mediums, amen. You can do that. We're also on PayPal, amen. Back handle uh, is We Are Bethesda. So there are various ways you can always give. And obviously, you know, if you come by the church, we can also, you know, take your card and we can give electronically as well that way. Um, but there are ways that you can continue to be a blessing to this ministry during this season, amen. During this season, our faith is stretched as believers, amen, to continue to follow follow God's word as ordinances in this season where days are lean in this season when it seems like amen we're up to almost 30 percent unemployment amen we trust and believe God that he's a God of provision even for the saints and so I want to make an appeal today amen to meet God in his word meet him in faith amen and continue amen to partner with God amen as we amen continue to give amen for the upbuilding of God's kingdom amen I'm amen I'm not old yet I'm getting older amen and I have yet to see amen the righteous forsaken amen nor his seed begging bread amen so let's amen honor God amen his faithfulness in his word and let's continue to be good stewards even in this season amen we thank God for the ministry that we have here that's being able to be a blessing to so many families during this season right um, we're able to use our resources to partner with the community, amen, in the city of the county of Los Angeles to be able to provide food to those families that are in need, amen, and so we want to continue those work and those efforts here to make sure that people who need resources at the most critical parts and points of their life during this season, amen, have them, and we as believers, amen, can do that to make sure that as a body of Christ, we're continuing, amen, the work here in the kingdom, so I certainly want to encourage your giving today, amen, meet us in faith, amen, meet us Amen. As a measure of faith, amen. According to God's word, amen. By giving of your amen gifts and blessings. And I know this is the challenge for all ministries, amen, all across the world. And if you've been tuning into any broadcast, you've heard the appeal. We're no different, amen. Uh, during this season, we're considered a non essential business per se. But I don't think there's anything more essential, amen, than the presence of God, amen, in God's house, amen. So we, the believers, amen, can in this season when it seems like the world has a different view of of how we value, amen, uh, kingdom business and how we, amen, uh, and they want to undervalue, amen, the presence of God. We can show our value and appreciation by being a blessing and a gift to the body of Christ, amen. So again, you can always, amen, mail, mail it, amen. If you're going to mail it, amen, make sure that you're using checks and money orders, amen. Don't put any cash in the mail, amen. <laughs> and no cash in the mail, all right. <laughs> checks or money order, you can mail those, amen, to our, amen, our address, 4936 Crenshaw Boulevard, amen, Los Angeles, California, 9 0043. Again, you can use the Cash App, Amen app, Amen, dollar sign, Bethesda Temple LA, Amen. And by all means, Amen, you can use PayPal as well, Amen, back handle, we are Bethesda, Amen, to give. And I thank and praise God for even those that are here, Amen, who are 
Amen. Choosing to worship and, and to praise God with us in our giving. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray a special blessing at this time. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy. We thank you for being a God of provision, even in this season, oh God. And it's our prayer and desire, oh God, that even in this time, oh God, when it seems as if we're, amen, scattered and stretched and it seems as if, oh God, it, it seems as if uh, uh, the world doesn't even know how to manage what's going on, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for being a God of surplus, for being a God of provision for being a God that with the moving of his hand, O oh God, can take care of his people, O oh God. And we pray a special blessing for those, amen, who partner in faith today, O oh God, taking you at your word, O oh God, that you'll meet them in their needs, O oh God, that there'll be provision, O oh God, that there'll be, O oh God, more than enough, O oh God, in this season, O oh God, of famine, in this season when people don't have focus, O oh God, we thank you for the clarity we have, O oh God, that you'll take care of your people, and we love you and we honor you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. How many know that you can make it? Hallelujah. You can make it through the storm, yes. through the tests. Yes. And while you're giving on, on, online and you're going on PayPal, you're going on these different sites to give, I want you to sing this song. It basically says, I'll make it. I know we're going through a storm right now, but you make it. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, clap with me.
do believe I'll make it. <laughs> I do believe I'll make it. Some way, somehow. <laughs> I've got to make this journey. Somehow. I do believe I'll make it. <laughs> it's going to be all right. Yeah. Look at somebody talk. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do believe I'll make it. I do believe I'll make it. Amen. I believe the storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Again, we welcome everyone for joining us. Amen. On this afternoon and our worship experience. I'm going to call on Sister Pam to come real quickly. Amen. And just give us some updates. Amen. On what's going on in our community. Amen. Our commitment as a ministry is to make sure you're informed on what's going on here in the city of Los Angeles. What's going on across the country. Amen. As we amen weather this season. Amen. Of uncertainty. So let's receive her with some updates as she comes in Jesus name. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord Saints. Amen. Hopefully the information that we provided on last week was able to be a help to some out there. Um, so we just wanted to give a little bit more information about some things that are changing and things that are offered through um, the state and federally speaking. So first and foremost, I'm sure all of us have heard about the stimulus package already. Oh, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> um, so there, there's eligibility requirements for the stimulus package. So any family uh, sorry, individual that makes $75,000 or less will be eligible for a $1,200 stimulus package um, in addition to $500 for each child that's in the household. And then for married couples that make less than $150,000, they will be eligible for $2,400 with the same $500 per child. Um, and then that number starts to phase out. Um, the more money you make up to $99,000, there's a a percentage of that stimulus that you will be eligible to receive. There is a calculator that you can use and go to that's on CNN.com and also IRS.gov um, <clears throat> that you can use to figure out exactly how much money you will be eligible for. So the way that you will get this, there's a lot of false information out there. You have to fill out the census. You have to do all of these things. They will be issuing this stimulus check through the IRS. Um, so it's going to be based on your taxes that you filed, and that's the income that they'll use. If you have yet to file your 2019 taxes, then they'll use your income from 2018. Um, so it's important to note that they're going to issue that the same format that you received your, um, your refund. So if that was direct deposit, it's going to be direct deposited to you. If not, then that check will be mailed to you. Each and every person will receive a letter in the mail a few weeks out that's going to describe exactly how your um, stimulus um, paycheck was issued to you. So you need to wait until you receive that letter before you call to try to figure out where your stimulus is because it's going to take them a while to get it to everyone, although they're trying to start that process in the next three weeks. Um, and so that's important to know, but then also unemployment. There are so many opportunity saints. Um, we just saw, talked about how we'll make it, and we know that God is the source of our resources. And even in the time of need, he's still a provider. He's still Jehovah Jireh. And so we just thank God for just how he's moving on the hearts of, you know, the politicians to put things into place so that we have the resources that we need. So for those that are unemployed right now, there are so, so many benefits. I mean, just give me a moment. I'm going to try to get you through some of them. Um, those that have been directly affected by COVID-19, that means if you had to um, take off work because schools were closed, your daycare was closed, you're eligible for unemployment. Um, those that are freelancers and self-employed, which normally were not eligible for unemployment, gig workers, you are now eligible for unemployment. That means Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, um, cosmetologists, nail ladies, you know, all of those people that have been impacted by um, what's happening with COVID-19, you are now eligible for unemployment. Um, that list goes on and on. You, if you're a veteran, if you're on SSI, you are eligible, sorry, for that stimulus package. Um, and so not only did they extend out the eligibility to meet more people's needs, they also have increased the amount that you get for um, your unemployment. So you, you're going to get that normal amount that you get that's a percentage of your paycheck, but then each and every individual is eligible for an additional $600 a week. Amen? 
Amen. 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 So um, you want to make sure that you're looking out if this applies to you. If you're an Uber driver and you're making less money, even if you're still working, you're eligible for unemployment and to get these additional benefits. It might be a percentage of that amount, but you're still eligible. And then um, on top of the on top of extending out who's eligible and increasing the amount that you're eligible for, they've also extended out the time that you're eligible for unemployment. So now instead of just being 26 weeks, now we're, they're el you're eligible for 39 weeks. That's 10 months, almost 10 months of eligibility. So again, I want to point out, if you were un on unemployment prior to COVID-19, prior to coronavirus, you are eligible for that extension as well. You are also eligible for that additional $600 a week. So saints, if you need help with this and where to go and how to figure this out, please, please, please contact us and we can help you through this process of how to do it. They're still trying to work it out, so you'll need to go through your particular state to figure out exactly how to apply. Um, but you are eligible. The program is called Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program. Amen? So under this program, if you're self-employed, if you're a freelancer, if you're an independent contractor, if you lost your job, if you had to take time off because you were taking care of a loved one that has contracted the virus, all of these things are covered. In addition to the fact that at your individual places of employment, if you had to be asked to be quarantined because of medical issues or you're taking care of a loved one who had to be quarantined, there is 80 hours of available sick time for you without losing your job that your job has to um, give you. So again, please contact us if you need additional information. There's so much misinformation out there, so we just wanted to be able to get, have a place where we can give you guys accurate information and be able to help you along with this process. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 We want to give a special shout out to Sister Pam for every week. Amen. To every week committing, amen, to research and find out what's going on and make sure that you as believers, amen, have all the information we have on how to navigate this season. If there's one thing I want to add as well, I was stopped by the bank this week, amen, and I had made a card payment before they told me <laughs> that during this COVID season, you can get up to three-month deferment on card payments, amen, for some, check with your, check with your landlords. There are in many cases, because of the epidemic, there's deferment on rents. Amen. Sometimes mortgages as well. I'm a mortgage company as well. So during this season, be amen. Student loans, all that kind of stuff. Amen. For those, amen. In this season, there's it's a season of deferment, a season of pause. Now I'm not saying it's gonna go away. You got to make it up probably at the rears. <laughs> but in this season, when resources are stretched, amen, we want you to be very well aware that, amen, there are certain things that are coming into play that are gonna give us an opportunity. Amen. To have a little bit of um, a little bit of runway. Amen. To recover for those uh, losses in this season. So govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. By all means, research. Amen. Go out. Make sure that you're fact checking and everything like that. But I appreciate. Amen. Dr. Pam. Amen. Coming in to give us that information. Amen. So that we as saints in this season can navigate this. Amen. Epidemic. Amen. Amen. Before we get to the word of God, what we do every amen Sunday morning here is we greet all of our guests and visitors. So even if you're in the sanctuary, pull out your phone. Just say what's up to somebody on social media real quick. Amen. <laughs> amen. Everybody check in. Amen. Everybody just kind of amen. Say praise the Lord. Say something to us. Let us know you're watching. Let us know that you're enjoying. Amen. The fellowship. Amen. Amen. We send you greetings on behalf of our first lady, first lady shorter. Amen. She wants to know where the towels are. Please hold the towels up so that she knows y'all got them. Amen. Amen. We got, <laughs> we got our towels. Amen. <laughs> Doing everything we can amen, to make sure that we're covered in this season. Amen. So we say God bless you to first lady. Amen. To the kids who are watching. Amen. At home. We say a special God bless you and send special prayers to first lady May. Amen. Mother May uh, Alexander, we're definitely lifting her up, amen, praying, amen, for God's renewed strength, amen, in her life, amen. But in this season, we just want to say God bless you to everybody who near and far, amen, is worshiping along with us, amen. God bless you all. We love you all, amen. God is doing something wonderful on me, amen. Okay, okay, amen, amen. All right, amen. <laughs> <laughs> We love you all. God bless you, Sister Shay. My mama's watching. My grandmother's watching. We say God bless you to everybody. Live from here in Los Angeles. <laughs> God is doing something wonderful in me. 
God is doing something wonderful in me. Something awesome and incredible, but only he will get the glory. God is doing something wonderful, incredible and awesome. God is doing something wonderful in me. Have your hands and help me say yeah.
doing something wonderful, even right now. <laughs> Hopefully you felt that. Amen. We want to say thank and praise God. Amen. For our music ministry this morning. Amen. God bless you all. Hopefully you're enjoying everything out there in social media land. Amen. We thank God for our minister of music, Sister Remy. Amen. Our MD, Brother Aaron Ash. On drums, Brother Terrence Alexander. Amen. 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 And God bless you all. Thank you to our sound team. Amen. That's helping us out today. Amen. We're excited about what God is doing. Amen. Social distancing. Social distancing. All right. <laughs> Amen. 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 Again, God is doing something wonderful. Quick word for you today. And we'll let you jump on somebody else's broadcast. <laughs> Amen. But we're thankful to God for this opportunity, although we are kind of restricted in what we can and can't do to be able to try to bring you the Bethesda Temple worship experience. Amen. To your living rooms, to your homes, to your cars, wherever you might be. If it's one thing that I wanted to do in this season is to make sure that we didn't cheat Amen. The worship experience, even though we're not able to all be here together. And so hopefully you're enjoying the presence of God with us today. Amen. 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 Go with me real quickly to the word of the Lord. Amen. Today it challenges us in the book of Genesis, chapter number seven. Book of Genesis, chapter number seven. Genesis chapter number 7, verse number 23 and 24, and then we'll go over to chapter number 8 and read the first verse of Genesis chapter number 8, verse number 1. When you found it, would you say, I'm there? Amen. Amen. That's Genesis chapter number 7, verses 23, amen, and 24, and then Genesis chapter number 8 and verse number 1. Here beginning with the reading of God's holy word. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth and Noah only remained alive and they that were with him in the ark and the waters prevailed upon the earth in 150 days. Go over to chapter number eight. Just turn the page real quick. Amen. Uh, Genesis eight and verse number one. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assunged. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that you would give us clarity and that you would give us, amen, revelation and insight, amen, instruction for this day. We thank you and praise you for your awesome hand. And we ask even now that you would meet us in faithful, God, and allow us to receive this word and it would be of nourishment to our body and strength to our bones for this season. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. I want to just minister from the first three words of chapter number eight, verse number one. And God remembered. And God remembered. We're concluding, for those of you that are just catching up with us, we're concluding a series of messages that we've been expounding upon through the first quarter of the new decade, 2020, entitled Words to Live By. These were a series of messages, amen, that were placed in my spirit as words of life, words of affirmations, words of faith, words of courage, words of strength, words of great deliverance and power to jumpstart this decade for many of us. It's always been said that, amen, your foundation is, or your, your building is only as strong as its foundation. And so I really believed and pressed in my spirit, amen, to seek God for what, amen, he would say to the church as we started this new ministerial journey in the year of 2020. And he shared with me that you want to deposit into the lives of believers words that they can live by, that these will be words that they could take to heart. Amen. Not just cliches, not just things that we read all the time, but words that actually would set the framework, amen, to allow them to do great exploits in the lives, amen, in their lives and the lives of people that they will be a blessed to partner with, amen, and to be an example to in this decade. We don't want to live, amen, at the end of this decade in 2029 if the Lord should tarry, should delay his coming and live with regret. 
Many of us came out of the last decade, how much time we wasted in the teens of, of the new millennium. Amen. But I want us, amen, to get our focus and attention, amen, centered on these words, amen, to live by, words that can frame our future, amen, so that we don't look up down the line, amen, and have regret on things that we should have done because we didn't start the decade out right. And one of our first messages for this year was a message that we didn't really hoop about, amen, but it came to us, amen, from, amen, uh, uh, the book of 1 Kings chapter number 6, verse number 11. The word of the Lord came unto Solomon concerning the house that he was to build. And most importantly, what you must understand in this season, amen, is that we're all called to build something. Solomon was called to complete the task that his father could not complete because there was too much blood on his hands. And so the Bible said that Solomon had to carry out the responsibility of building God a house, building him a dwelling place. But he says that if thou would walk in my commandments and walk in my statute, let's keep my judgments, amen, then I will perform my word with thee, which I spake unto David thy father. And I will dwell, amen, with the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built the house and finished it. And so the first word that we received in this decade, amen, from this pulpit was focus, amen, to get finished, amen. And so I really believe that in order for us to build, amen, you must understand that if we don't build it the right way, we don't build it, amen, with his statutes and build it executing his judgments and, amen, build things, amen, considering his commandments, amen. The structure of the thing that we're building has no foundation. It's a wonderful work of art. It's a wonderful thing we have, but it has, amen, no anchor, amen, if it's not anchored in the word of God. And Solomon used those words and it accelerated something in his spirit, amen, to go out and to do something that would become the marvel of the world. To go out and to complete this vision because he took these words and these precepts and these statutes and he allowed it to germinate in his spirit and it became his blueprint for success. And so these words that God has placed in our spirit, amen, are words that are placed in us to go out and to accelerate the things that God wants us to do, that we would bring, bring, bring beauty, amen, to his name and beauty, amen, to purpose and beauty to the glory of God. The scriptures, amen, come to us today from the book of Genesis, amen. I think it's only fitting that we would, amen, find ourselves just like the text in a chaotic period. Amen. As you're, amen, looking all in the news, you'll see that what we have is a bunch of chaos. And if you watch the right news channel, depending on the time of the day, you'll come to find out that it's just a matter of moments before things get extremely worse. We're living in chaotic times, times that resemble the times of a man by the name of Noah. The scriptures would tell us throughout scripture, amen, to remember these days and to set our hearts not to look back. <laughs> to remember the days of Noah. For those of us that were in Sunday school, amen, growing up, just indulge me for a few moments. This might seem to be, amen, repetitive, or it might appear to be something, amen, that is not, amen, uh, uh, something that's unfamiliar to you. But nevertheless, it's something, amen, I think of great importance uh, and great importance uh, as well as great potence, amen, to our spiritual, amen, being. The scriptures would tell us that in this period of time, a man around the uh, chapter number six, that God grew weary. He grew weary of all the violence. He grew weary of the wickedness. And amen, if there's maybe a message in a message uh, that we have for this time is that maybe God is growing weary of some of the things that he's seeing here on earth. <laughs> I don't want to use necessarily, amen, this incident, amen, to incorrectly prophesy the coming of the Lord. There's some people who would use this moment to do such. I would use this moment to tell you to be heightened and to be aware, amen, that maybe God is not pleased pleased with some of the stuff that he is seeing <laughs> and to guard your heart the scripture says in the text that God grew weary of violence and wickedness on the earth and he decided to send a flood amen and to start again the imagination of the hearts of people and the heart of mankind was evil continually the scriptures would tell us and the scripture says that in the midst of all that God saw he saw wickedness he saw vain imagination he saw buffoonery and 
foolishness. He saw a man giant in the land and he saw a man, a man, uh, uh, daughters, a man that were fair. And he saw a man, the daughters that were multiplying and men that were taking on uh, wives that they chose. And he would tell us that his spirit would not always strive with men. But in the midst of all that God saw, the scripture tells us that even as he says that he repented within himself, that he had made man and that he had grieved in his heart. In the midst of all that he saw, the scripture says that God found favor with Noah. <laughs> and all that he was seeing, the scripture says that God could see the demonstration of a life of an individual. And verse number eight of chapter number six would tell us, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's that's a powerful statement that in the midst of all that God was seeing <laughs> uh, and enough that would be offensive to God and enough. Amen. That God would say to himself, I'm going to wash the earth. I'm going to purge the earth. Amen. I'm going to start this work all over again in the midst of all that he saw he found faithfulness he found righteousness he found holiness I I wonder in the midst of all that we're facing in times like these if the view of heaven concerning your life is that God finds faithfulness <laughs> God finds righteousness God finds holiness in the midst of all that God saw the intimate details the visual of God the crystal clear amen picture of what's happening on earth in the midst of all that he saw he saw someone whose heart was toward him someone whose heart and mind was made to serve him amen and to give him amen worship and honor and appreciation the scriptures would tell us amen that God would amen begin a work in the life of a man by the name of Noah amen when he was 500 years old uh, yes, yes. He did this work in the latter years of his life. This just marvel at that moment, amen, in, in someone's life, amen. Not even close to 50 just yet, but could you imagine being 500 years old, amen, and then you just start having children. <laughs> ah, 500 years old, amen, and, and, and all of a sudden from the portals of heaven comes a voice and instruction and guidance unto you concerning, amen, a huge responsibility, amen, that will be necessary for the, for the persever, uh, uh, preservation of mankind, that God would use you in a time when you feel as if you have no strength, and God would use you in a season when you feel like you're inadequate, ah, that God, amen, at age 500 would tell Noah I have use for you it would tell us amen as you're writing this down that it's it's never too late amen for God to work in you <laughs> ah, yes it's never too late for God to get started in the lives of people who have a made up mind for God to get started in the lives of people amen who would center their heart and conscience to being used of God and most importantly not only is it never too late for God to get working in your life it's never too late for you to reproduce uh, yes, it's it's never too late, amen, for you to multiply in the blessings and favor of God. It's it's never too late, amen, amen, for God to do something wonderful, amen, marvelous and beautiful, amen, in your life. Many of us, amen, uh, 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 fail to realize, uh, amen, that amen in this day and age that God is not set amen to your particular time frames and that God is not set to your 10, 3 year, 5 year plan or goal God can start a work in you right now. God can give you a vision right now. God can amen birth purpose in you right now. Somebody say right now. <laughs> uh, there are three important things I want you to remember amen because Noah is called to do a great work in a day of chaos. If there's something you must realize for navigating this season that is very chaotic all across the world literally is these important principles I want you to try, write these down if you if you have a moment one is that it is possible to hear from God in the day of chaos it's possible to hear from God in the day of chaos in the midst of all that was going on how is it that no one could hear from God but Noah 
<laughs> How is it in the midst of ah, that when everybody's hearts were turned from praying and seeking God and when people maybe were taking on religious antidotes for the moment? How is it that in the midst of all that was going on, the rise of wickedness and the rise of violence, amen, that someone's ear would be sensitive enough to hear from God? I want you to be sensitive in this season to realize that even in chaotic moments, you can still hear from God. <laughs> yeah. The second point that I want you to understand concerning the life of Noah, amen, is that it is possible not only that you can hear from God, but that you can live for God in the day of chaos. It's possible that you could that you can live for God in a day of chaos, in a day when everybody was doing all that they wanted to do, all that was right in their own eyes. They married and they drank and were given away in marriage. The scriptures would tell us in the book of Matthew, the scripture says that in this day, a man of chaos, he set his heart to live for God. In this day, it's possible that you can hear for him from him and that you can live for him. <laughs> Don't tell me in this day when everybody's doing what they want to do and, and in this day when it seems as if we're walking in newfound freedoms and we're walking in new centers of intellect that it means that you can forget God and stop living for God. Even in the midst of chaos, God is saying, I have a people set aside that will live for me. <laughs> the last point, amen, not only can you hear from God and live for God, amen, it is possible to obey God, amen, in a day of chaos. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> ah, anybody that would have gotten the news or gotten the prophetic message from, amen, uh, brother, that brother Noah got from God, their hearts might have been smoten by the faith of the world. They might have, amen, uh, waxed cold in this season and didn't want to carry out the pristine instructions, the pristine measurements of this assignment. There are some people that when chaos breaks out, you shrink in the moment. When chaos breaks out, you forget the scriptures. When chaos breaks out, you forget live holy. When, this, when chaos breaks out, you forget, amen, continue to incline your ear unto God, amen. And when chaos breaks breaks out you forget the scripture that says that trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding when chaos breaks out when sometimes you get moves uh, get messages from God sometimes it'll scare you <laughs> in chaos when you get prophetic words amen uh, it'll scare you into the point that you take shortcuts yeah I'm gonna build this ark but I'm gonna build it my way <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go to church, but I'm going to do it my way. Yeah, I'm going to be affiliated with ministry, but I'm going to do it my way. In this season, Moses, or in this season, Noah had to pay pristine attention to every instruction that came from God. What beasts had to make it? Which beasts couldn't make it? How you were to measure each of the doors? How are you to, or, or the, the door? How you were to measure the different layers? What his instruction was concerning the provision necessary to survive the storm and unless he obeyed every commandment we all would have been wiped out <laughs> ah, I want you to understand something it's possible in the midst of chaos with people telling you you don't have to live holy with people telling you ah the, the naysayers are rising up telling you what you doing that for it ain't ever gonna rain when people are telling you crazy man <laughs> ah, to take on this task and responsibility it's possible that you can still obey God in chaos Somebody say amen. Despite everything going on in Noah's day, it did not interrupt his communication with God. Uh, despite the circumstances of life, it should never interrupt our purpose. Uh, uh, yes, the chaos of the world should never hinder the believer from obedience. Uh, just because the world is going a certain direction doesn't mean you have to go that same direction. So for his 50th birthday, for his 500th birthday gift, God gives him a word. <laughs> when you turn 500, I kind of wonder what kind of birthday party do you have when you turn 500? <laughs> uh, when he turns 500 years old, the scripture says he gets a word from God. <laughs> uh, that in his old age, he has to build God an ark. <laughs> in his old age, he says, build me an ark that I may preserve. <laughs> build me an ark that I may have a people set aside from my divine will. <laughs> Build because it's going to rain. 
And for many of us, it's hard to build when we don't know what's coming. Uh, many of us stumble in life because if we don't see the immediate, the immediate benefit of cooperation and obedience, we'll ignore the directive. <laughs> For many of us, we stumble in life because we don't see the immediacy, amen, of following the instruction. <laughs> and because we don't see the immediate benefit, amen, we aren't motivated to take action. There's another word for it. It's called procrastination. <laughs> yeah, saving money didn't make sense to a lot of us until we hit a storm. Uh, going this taking taking school seriously amen didn't matter to many of us until we hit a recession ah uh, uh, yes living the, the the consequence of living a life with no urgency is the day of the storm i'll say it again the consequence of living life with no urgency is the day of the storm uh, when you don't live a life of urgency you're susceptible to the day of storm Ah, ah yes ah yes I, 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 yeah ah, when you live life amen amen on borrowed time when you live life procrastinating when you when you live life twiddling your thumbs and fingers with no purpose you set yourself up amen for the unexpected ah, for the bible says that the men amen when they saw rain come from heaven it is as, as if they had never seen rain before ah, most of the time when it rained in old testament the water came up from the earth. This was the first time that the water had come down amen from the portals of heaven. You have to understand something. They never anticipated seeing water come down on them because water always came up. And so because they were never prepared amen for this season they never expected God to operate in a different manner. And for some of us we get stuck because you keep expecting God to do the same thing over and over and over again. I've given you instruction on how to survive this season but you keep playing the same games over and over again so when I hit you with the switch, when I hit you in a different direction, your life is scattered, amen, and you don't know what to do to your own detriment. Uh, yes, so Noah, he has to remain faithful with no timetable. Ah, uh, yes, he has to build, amen, with no real end date. Uh, I have a question for some of you. Can you be faithful uh, to this season of building uh, when it has no expiration date? Uh, can you be faithful to this season of building uh, uh, when God, amen, doesn't tell you when to stop building? Uh, Noah built over a hundred years uh, yes with no word amen no cloud no sense of understanding uh, just knowing that with certainty there was a word from God uh, that said it was gonna rain uh, um, the Bible tells us uh, yes that he has to build uh, yes with just a word I want to know can you be faithful with just a word I feel my help in here today can you be faithful with just the word of God. Ah, yes, with the season in which we're living, the question becomes, can you be faithful when you don't have the full picture? Can you be faithful when you don't have clarity? Can you be faithful when you don't know what God is doing and how God is moving the pieces on the chessboard? Can you be faithful when you don't know which way he's coming? Can you be faithful with that which he's placed in your burden and your responsibility? Even when you don't know how he's going to make the way of escape. Ah, yes. How interesting that Noah is preaching during a time that resembles... Um, the church today. Uh, yes, it's interesting that he preached for 100 years. Uh, the scripture said that he ministered for 100 years. Uh, he built and he preached. Uh, he built and he preached, uh, uh, but was never able to convince anybody uh, to get on the ark. Uh, how interesting that we're experiencing this epidemic. Everybody's supposed to stay home. Uh, and so metaphorically, uh, every Sunday, Noah showed up and preached to an empty church. Ah, uh, yes. Every Sunday, he showed up uh, with nobody saying amen. Uh, he showed up with people uh, who says, you got to be crazy, man. Uh, live your life. You out here 500 years old. Uh, out here gathering up sheep. Uh, out here 
here gathering up gopher wood, out here gathering up grain. You got to be crazy, man. Go out and do your thing, man. Uh, yes, he showed up and preached to an empty church. He built, uh, yes, the scriptures tell us. Uh, yes, uh, Second Peter chapter number 2, verse 2, 4, and 5. Because we live in the day of false preachers, in the day of foolishness. He says, many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be spoken of. He says, for if God spared not the angels that sinned and cast them down into hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing the floods upon the world of the ungodly. Paraphrasing, if God didn't show mercy on the angels that chose not to follow Follow his statutes. Why would God be playing with us? Why would God, amen, not be true to his word? But what I found interesting is the characteristic of Noah. He was a preacher of righteousness in a time when the world was unrighteous. He was an engineer by day and a preacher by night. A businessman by day. A procurement specialist by day. And a preacher by night. A zoologist and a preacher. A meteorologist and a preacher. He was a father and a preacher. He was a foreman and a preacher. He faced opposition, but he preached. He faced naysayers, and he preached. And why did he keep preaching? Because he had a word. I got to tell somebody out there in social media, all you need is the word. If there's nobody that gets on your side, if there's nobody that takes up your cause, hold on to the word that God has given you. For he that shall come will come and he will not tarry. Somebody in this house, help me praise God for the set of word that he's given you. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting as he preached uh, yes as he preached the dynamics of this wonder the scriptures tell us that there was only one door to the ark uh, yes, there's a lot of people saying a lot of stuff on social media today but I'm here to remind you that in the beauty of this wonder called the ark there was only one door I come to tell you uh, just like John the Beloved would tell us uh, in John 19 and 19 uh, that Jesus is the door. Uh, let no man deceive you in this day. Uh, Jesus is still the way. Uh, let no man deceive you. Uh, Jesus is the only way. Uh, you can exercise. Uh, you can take an Advil a day. Uh, uh, you can walk. Uh, uh, yes, you can eat right and read books. Um, but just as he built, as he preached, there's only one way uh, to glory. There's only one way to heaven. And it's through Jesus. Somebody help me praise God for the door. He is the door. So he preached. And he preached righteousness. Yes. As the days of Noah are, so shall they be here in the coming of the son of man for as in the day before the flood they were eating and drinking and marrying and given to marriage until the day Noah entered the ark the scriptures tell us ah yes and knew not until the flood came and took them all the way so shall the coming of the son of man be ah yes and the scripture says that as soon as he got in the scripture says that the Lord shut the door. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Have to get that another time. Let's get out of here. Ah, uh, yes. He did all of this preaching and building, and he did it all without complaining. Can I ask you something today? Can you stop doing stuff for God and reminding Him what you do for Him? 
Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Some of us, ah, uh, yes, the reason, the reason some of us are frustrated in this season is you have to keep reminding God what you do for him. Noah did all this and above all, he never complained. Some of us do stuff for God and have to keep bringing it up to God. Okay, God, you see, I spoke to her. Okay, God, you see, I stood after service and cleaned up when nobody else cleaned. Okay, God, you see me tithing when people with rental property ain't giving you nothing. Yes, I want you to understand and write this down if necessary. God honors not just what you go through. God honors how you go through. Uh, yeah, for many of us, ah, uh, yes, we go through complaining. We go through taking notes. Ah, uh, yes. Did you go through the cancer, kicking and screaming, or did you go through it with peace? Uh, did you complain about being on a fixed income, or did you just endure? Did you become bitter because you had to raise children by yourself, or did you just keep building did you become building uh, did you become bitter because daddy wasn't in your life or did you just make up in your mind to keep going forward the problem with so many of us is instead of doing what God called us to do you got a call and response for everything you got a complaint for everything and how bad life is treating you how you have no support system how nobody's getting beside you how you got a no good husband how you got a no good wife how they're treating you on the job and you take so much time engulfed with everything that's going on that you fail to realize that God just wants obedience he doesn't want you to just keep running up the tab he wants you in this season to go through it with patience as a good soldier maybe the reason why why God can't remember you is because you keep keep uh, uh, you keep keeping score. Uh, yeah, maybe that's the reason why he's not moving is you keep reminding him instead of letting him work it out the way he needs to work it out. Can I take a detour for a quick second? I get back. One of the most critical roles when you play dominoes or spades is the person that keeps score. I'm looking right at you, Nikita, because you didn't got dusted off a few times. <laughs> yeah. One of the most critical things when you play dominoes or spades is the person that's keeping score has to be integral. They got to make sure they give you your nicks and they give you your dimes. Or like Sister Nicholson, as she would say, 15 for your Christine. All those things, 20 times. Yeah. You got to make sure the person with the pen has integrity. Yes. But what happens when you're playing and God is the scorekeeper? What are you telling God every time you lean over and tell him, did you get my nick? Did you get my dime piece? What you're telling God is he has no integrity. What you're telling God is he has no character. Why would God be interested in pencil whipping you? Why would God be interested in not writing down your work at the food bank? Why would God not be interested in keeping tabs of your loving kindness? Why would God all of a sudden forget your work? Why would God all of a sudden forget your labor of love? Why would God forget you picking up the tab? Why would God forget you buying groceries for somebody else? When, when I come to understand, Nikita, when I'm playing spades or domino, if I keep my mind on the scorekeeper, I don't perform well. 
Y'all, y'all lost it. Maybe you get it online. The more I focus on who's keeping score, the more it gets me out of my element, Aaron. I can't lock people out like I can. I can't focus on my numbers. I don't see straight. And for some of you, God is saying, you can't focus on the game because you're so focused on what I'm doing instead of what you're supposed to be doing. Write it down. Take a picture if you need to. But look around and tell somebody, let God be God. Let God be scorekeeper. Let God keep good books. Let God keep good records. If there's anybody that can hook you up, if there's anybody you can trust, it's God. If there's anybody that won't fail you, it's God. If there's anybody that won't let you down, it's God. If there's anybody that can pay you and hook you up, it's God. I wish I had somebody help me give God a praise. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, and God remembered. Yeah. I want you to understand something. Yes, what, what, what we don't tell you is why you're building. What we don't tell you is you're building for self-preservation. But what we don't tell you while you're building is that after you've built, you still have to labor. After you've made sacrifices, after you've been stretched, then you're ready for the storm. I feel like having church all by myself. It's after he's pulled you. It's after he's taken you through. It's after he's tried your patience. It's after you've gotten every part of your nerve extracted. He said, it's then and only then. Are you ready for the storm? Some of you don't understand this text. He had to build a hundred years. Had to put up with doubters. Had to put up with naysayers. Had to put up with people who didn't believe. Only to be put in the storm. And I come to tell some of you, you're not quite qualified yet for the storm. God is saying, I'm taking you through all that I'm taking you through to get you ready for the storm. What if I told you that after you've cried, after you've worked your fingers to the bone, and shining and straightening then and only then are you ready for the storm look at your neighbor and say neighbor are you ready for the storm I know you can't say that out there in social media land look around your room look around and just tell yourself am I ready for the storm that's a lot to go through for your neighbor next reward to be a storm. I'm preaching to somebody out there that says, why would I have to sacrifice? Why would I have to max out credit cards? Why would I have to beg, borrow, and steal just to get into the storm? But God said, all of your building was to get you ready for this day. All of your crying was to get you ready for this day. All of your pressing was to get you ready for this day. All of your fasting was to get you ready for this moment. All of the all night prayer was to get you ready for this season. All of the stretching of your heart. All of the stretching of your mind was to get you ready for this season. And God built you with a storm in mind. God built your faith for a season called Corona. God built you for a season where people would desert you. God built you for a season where you would have to walk by yourself. I wish I had some help. I feel like preaching all by 
yourself. But he told me to tell you, you were created with a storm in mind. I built you. I built your character. I built your integrity. I made you stop complaining. I made you stop quitting. I made you stop walking away. I made you be faithful so that when this storm came, you could remain. Somebody clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Say yeah. Say yeah. Somebody type in the comment section. This is your finest hour. I come to tell some of you this season is the season where God is going to show the world just what you're made of. This season is very critical for you because it's in this season God's going to show the world you got the good stuff. God's going to show your enemies. You are built for seasons like this. You weren't built to be tackled by the wind. You weren't built to cave in. You weren't built to fall apart. You are built on a sure foundation. I wish I had somebody in here that would tell somebody this is your finest moment Bethesda this is your finest season people of God the world is going to get a front row seat to all of the wonders of the power of God if you believe it open up your mouth and from your place of pain give him a praise from the place where it hurts give God a praise Say yeah, say yeah, this is the hour where God's going to put you on full display. This is your moment to shine. This is the moment you get to prove to people you weren't crazy. This is the moment you get to show people the power of a prayer life. This is the season Corona came so that God could show you how to stay afloat when the world is sinking. I feel like having church all by myself. I'm feeling good, y'all. We don't have nice service, so I might as well preach all of the sweat out of me. I feel like giving him glory. This is the season you get to show off what living under executive orders is really all about. You get to show the world you can make it with a consecrated life. You can make it with a prayer life. You can make it as a worshiper. You can make it as a praiser. Somebody help me give God a praise. He's getting ready to show the devil that you can survive even this. You can make it even through this. Somebody help me give him praise. I feel like having church all by myself. Somebody help me bless him. Say neighbor, say neighbor, in this season, God's going to show you it pays to stay in his will. In this season, God's going to show you it pays to live with integrity. God's going to show you in this season, it pays to have character. In this season, God's going to show you it pays to keep your virginity. Somebody help me praise God for the promise. Help me praise God for a sure word. Help me praise God. He is a God that will remember. He is a God that won't forget you. He is a God that'll never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody help me. Say yeah, say yeah, he told me there are some people that will not make it through this season.
season they spent yesteryear complaining. They spent yesteryear starting drama. They built their house on ignorance and foolishness and gossip and misfortune. And now they have to live in that house but say neighbor over here on this side of Zion. I'm anchored in prayer. I'm anchored in worship. I'm anchored in praise. Somebody help me. Give him glory. As I close, verse number one of chapter eight says, and God remembered Noah after Noah built, he had to go through a season when he felt like maybe God abandoned him. But the scripture said, and God remembered Noah. I started scratching my head in the key. I said, how? If he got rid of everybody, how could God have forgotten the last hope? God said, go study that word. That word remembered is not in absence of knowledge. He said shorter. That word in the Hebrew means zakar. To remember means not just to bring it to my mind, but to act on their behalf. And God said, when I was remembering Noah, I just wasn't remembering the things that he did. I was putting myself in motion to act on his behalf. I come to tell the church of the living God that God said, not only have I not forgotten you, I'm getting ready to act in your storm. I'm getting ready to act in your health crisis. I'm getting ready to act in your financial difficulties. Somebody shout, and God remembered. God remembered. He remembered my pain. He remembered my tears. He remembered my children. And God, and God remembered my faithfulness. And God remembered my pain. And God remembered my tears. And God, and God remembered my obedience. And God remembered my breath. And God remembered my patience. And God remembered my character. And God remembered that on the other side, I praised him. And God remembered that in the fire, I worshiped him. Help me praise him. Somebody shout, and God remembered, and God remembered. He said, if I could find Noah in the midst of chaos, I could remember him in the midst of the storm. God never squanders favor. God never squanders grace. God never wastes investment.
God never wastes seed. If he found you to bless you, he's faithful to find you in the storm. <laughs> if he found you to favor you, he can find you to sustain you. Out of all of the billions of people that walk this earth, if he could find you to grace you, you must believe that he's able to keep you. And God remembered. These are words to live by. And God remembered. He is a promise keeper. He never comes short of his word. In this season, you've been built to survive. Just when you feel as if maybe you've gotten lost in transition, lost in translation, or lost in the thick of the day, keep reminding yourself that he's omniscient, he's all-knowing, and he'll never forget. He'll never forget his promise concerning you. He'll never forget his plan concerning your life. Today is your day. Just as the day of Noah, so shall it be now. When people are reckless, when people lose hope. God is saying, before it's too late, come on in the ark. Before I close the door, accept Jesus Christ. Know that he is the door. Know that he is the way. And God remembered me. When I thought I was losing my way. When I thought I had no hope. When I thought the world, the cares of this world were getting bigger than me. And I was overwhelmed by seasons of life. I go back and I see the scriptures that says, and God remembered. He remembered my faithfulness. He, rem he remembered my moans. He remembered. And not only did he remember, he got off the throne to come see about me. You have some people in life, they remember you. They can't do nothing for you. But what a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. He says, when you see and God remembered in Scripture, Hallelujah. particularly in the Old Testament, he says, take heart. Not only have you come to my mind, but that I'm going to do something on your behalf. Hallelujah. And God remembered. And God remembered. Yeah. Even in the midst of this crisis, know that God still remembers. He hasn't lost grip. Hasn't lost you in the thick of the crises. He's going to prepare his people. He's going to sustain his people. I hear God saying, not only am I going to remember you, I'm going to work on your behalf. Be not dismayed. Be encouraged. We're here even now. If you want to receive water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin, you know you need the gift of the Holy Ghost. Man cannot enter into the kingdom without water and spirit. You need the Holy Ghost. Salvation, according to Acts 2.38, starts with Repentance. Water immersion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the infilling of the Holy Ghost as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Speaking with other tongues. My prayer and desire today is if you don't know Jesus, that you would come and get to know him. Don't let the coronavirus keep you away from the water. Don't you let what's going on in this world stop you from receiving salvation. You're here and you need Jesus. We'll make special provision and arrangements to come 
and make sure you go down in the watery grave and come up in the newness of life. If you're here today, you have a special prayer request. Amen. Before we close out in prayer, we're going to call forth your names even right now. Hallelujah. 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 God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, for he won't give up on you. He's able. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know that he is. He's able. Yes, he is. Everybody say, God is able. God is able to do just what he said.
Robert House Hayes in the name of Jesus. Touch right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Touch the pastor and his family. Touch me right now in the name of Jesus. Lift up Chantel and Shanice for priests and, and, uh, and a grandson Ryan in the name of Jesus. Sister McMary Williams' grandchildren and great-grandchildren in the name of Jesus. We pray for the body of Christ in the name of Jesus and all the saints, oh God. Right now we ask a special blessing over all the health care professionals in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, oh God, that you would free them, oh God, that you would allow them to work and operate, oh God, with the shield in the name of Jesus, oh God, that no virus anti attack their body as they serve in the name of Jesus. Lift up every doctor, every nurse, every LVN, every RN, oh God, the administrative staff, oh God, the decision makers, oh God, the president, oh God, those who work in pharmaceuticals, oh God, all over this country, oh God, we pray, oh God, for the chief surgeon, oh God. Let them find amen resolution in the name of Jesus, oh God. I pray, oh God, Father God, that you lift up Shay, that you would lift up Nora Duffy, oh God, that you would lift up Caleb, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Grant her peace in the name of Jesus, oh God. Grant her peace right now, even where she is, oh God. Put a divine hedge of protection around her in the name of Jesus. Give her a spirit of patience, oh God, as you make a way, oh God. Bring healing to the home and understanding to the home in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke discouragement in the name of Jesus. I rebuke, amen, discouragement. Every demonic force trying to discourage my sister in the name of Jesus. I rebuke in the name of Jesus, oh God. We pray right now, oh God, for peace, for healing, for divine protection, oh God. Pray over this music ministry in the name of Jesus, oh God. Let your word go forth. Let your grace shine upon your people. Father God, and remember, and remember, and remember, lift up, oh God, sister, Crystal Fort Baghead, in the name of Jesus, oh God, continue, oh God, to heal, oh God, we thank you for the praise and testimony report of her healing, in the name of Jesus, oh God, and I pray, oh God, her testimony, oh God, inspire those, oh God, even Sister Monique, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, Father God, lift up our young people, oh God, let not them be discouraged in this season, oh God, we pray a special blessing over the young people that make up this house, oh God, in this season, let not grow weary and well-doing, Oh, God, we pray a special blessing over our young people, oh, God. Let them receive salvation, oh, God. Let them, oh, God, do well academically, oh, God. Help them stay focused, oh, God, inspired and empowered in the name of Jesus, oh, God. We bless you. We praise 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 you. We pray for the strength, amen, of Williams, amen the virtue to come back into the body in the name of Jesus. Oh God, and we come against the spirit of temptation. We rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus to go back in the name of Jesus. Cover your people, oh God. Cover your people, oh God. Let us remain focused, oh God. Let us get in the ark of safety before it's too late, oh God. It shall be light in the evening time, oh God. Father God, let that light, oh God, of the watery way, oh God, shine across this country. Let them know, oh God, that neither is there salvation given any other, oh God, oh God, but your name, oh God. Your name is a strong tower, oh God, baptized in Jesus' name. <laughs> Young and old, oh God, repent of all your sins. Let the Lord, oh God, come within, oh God, cover your people even now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. We send you God's favor from here, Bethesda Temple Church in the city of Los Angeles, California. If you're looking for a church home, amen. If you're looking, amen, amen, for a place of refuge, we'd love for you to minister with us or to come and be a part of this ministry and fellowship with us, amen, when we're able to unite again. We send a special covering over every home that's represented that God would protect his people even in the heightened sensitivity in the heightened time of corona, oh God. Protect your people. Let your hedge be upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God remember. And God remember. Do me a favor. Share this broadcast. Share this word with somebody that needs to know that God cannot forget. In Jesus' name we pray. We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you soon.